Hello, my name is Rachel Siggy and I'm thrilled to be hosting the RTS Q&A for Series 2 of The Dry, a show which so brilliantly tackles addiction and family dynamics and is extremely funny while doing so. The whole of the second series is coming to ITVX on Thursday the 14th of March and before we meet the panel, let's have a look at the trailer. You have told him you're a drunk, right? Well, I mean, I'm finally at a place in my life where I can say, no, that's not good for me. I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm an alcoholic. That's what I'm exploring in this piece. How one can be sober but still... <laughs> ...messy. Cheers. The Dry. Available now on ITVX. Right, we are so lucky to be joined today by The Dry's creator and screenwriter Nancy Harris, executive producer Emma Norton, director Paddy Brunock and lead actor Rasheen Gallagher. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, Nancy, can you remind us where we left things at the end of the first series and set the scene for series two? Where do we pick up? Uh, well, we left things in kind of both a sort of a bittersweet place, really, in that Shiv uh, fell off the wagon quite spectacularly at her sister's engagement party and got up on a table and spilled all her family secrets and while the family sort of rally around her and take her to an AA meeting and her mother comes in, we've got le left with this little moment of hope between her and her mother, who she's had this long and fractious relationship with, who comes into her AA meeting at the very end of season one. So it's kind of um, a sort of a coming together in a way between them. And then season two sees us seven months later and Shiv uh, is in a stronger place. She has been sober fully for seven months, fully committed and working the programme, feels like she has really got a handle on what it is to be in recovery, but it's still fragile enough. And the way she's kind of tackled it is to sort of cut off from life, from relationships particularly. And that is only going to last so long, basically. So, Rasheen, how happy were you to return to Shiv and the Sheridan family? Tell us about getting back into this character. I was so happy to come back to it. I was so thrilled when I knew there was going to be a second series. I feel like um, I just wasn't ready to let Shiv go. There was, you know, I just felt like there was so much more story to, t to tell. Thank God I didn't have to do the writing of it. Nancy has that covered. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was sort of... Um, yeah, just had a real unfinished business kind of feeling with her. And and um and when I started getting the scripts through for series two, it just went from, you know, good to better. Um and uh just delighted, delighted to be back on such a brilliant series, which with the with the 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 creative team that it is behind it and and cast and, and new members of cast as well. I mean, it's such a juicy lead role for you. Um, you must have been absolutely thrilled, uh, thrilled to play the part. She's she's not always super likable, but there is something that you, where you're always rooting for her, even when she's making bad decisions. Do you feel quite protective over her? Yeah, I do. I really do. And I think it's nice to hear that, you, you know, you are rooting for her. I certainly am. Um, the characters come come to life for me um, a little bit and, well a big bit um it's like if she was a person sitting beside me I don't know sometimes I want to hug her and sometimes I want to hit her and sometimes you want to give her a good kick up the arse and other times you just want people to leave her alone <laughs> so in, in in a sense you know I kind of go through the motions slightly that hopefully maybe the audience feel as well and connecting with her but in terms of land on a roll like Shiv you know it's just I mean it's just such a gift it really really is and, and I know that there's um extraordinary actresses out there who might not ever get the chance to uh, explore a role like that to, to take it apart and not only to do that once but to do it twice you know it's it's been um a highlight to say the least um Emma and Paddy I know you worked really really hard to bring the right people together uh, to play this family, the Sheridans, and make sure that they felt really believable. Can you tell us a little bit about the casting process? Yeah, um, so Paddy and I had worked together on a film called Rosie, which is from the poster behind Paddy. Good advertising, Paddy. <laughs> so we'd had, we'd been in the kind of process of casting together before. Um, 
and I think I mean I knew from that experience how how rigorous Paddy was uh, you know in, in the casting process and this one was done in a different situation because it was Covid times but that allowed us a lot of freedom in a lot of ways to watch a lot of tapes uh, and watch kind of you know huge quantities of self tapes self tapes and then go through recalls on zoom and then get into the uh sort of the finer detail of zoom chemistry uh testing as well and and that was very intensive but it was very revealing um and I'll, I'll let paddy talk about what it revealed but it was very much a process and then louise kiley our casting director is very patient with how often we like to kind of uh, you know how much we like to filter through and how kind of um, intensely we do that um and Roisin was very patient with us as well <laughs> because there was a bit of you know there was a bit of going again and going again um but Paddy I'll let you say more yeah I mean I mean it's kind of I suppose from maybe sometimes from uh, mistakes you made in the past, you kind of say, I'm not going to make that mistake again. And you take your time over casting and make sure because you realize in that moment, you're kind of beginning to make the thing, you know, that that decision of, of who you're casting is, is you know, makes the character um, come alive, I suppose, at, at, at that point. Um, and also, like, as a byproduct of that sort of being kind of rigorous around that casting is is that you get to you get to know and uh, the scripts you get to know the characters you get to have a chance to reflect and talk to Nancy and Emma about those things you know you 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 begin to know the the sort of bandwidth of where the comedy sits and how and how you have to adjust your vision of that or your your style maybe that you're going to shoot it in uh, so. So in a way that having taking your time around the casting has a lot of benefits that by the time you come to shoot the thing, you sort of have ingested a lot of it and a lot of the sort of thoughts around it and also the voices of the other core creatives involved. So, so it sort of unifies the vision a little bit, you know, if you've, if you've done that rigorous process early on. But it was a, it was a, uh, you know, from my perspective, because the show had a kind of a long gestation period and that character of Shiv, like it was so to find somebody like bringing what Roisin brings, like the writing a second season is so easy for me because I now go, I have this incredible actor who is just a genius at going to light and dark and navigating comp complex territory. But when you're first writing and we don't know who that is I had this fear I was like will we find the person who can be funny and and break your heart and I think that's what Roisin brings is you are always rooting for her I always am and that's the great thing about, about being able to show an, a, an addict in 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 the in recovery is that we have to be able to see her not acting in her in her own best interests but also be desperately on the side for her to be well, you know, and I think that's what um, it was so important for us and for Paddy and I and Emma to find that person. And we, I just feel that's where the second series has been kind of a joy is knowing that there's Roisin and she's incredible. I mean, the other thing, sorry, just to say, sorry, Emma, more, go on. Uh, the, and the other thing I just wanted to say was that none of us had seen Roisin. We didn't know you as an a actress and coming to see you on these tapes was so exciting because there were a lot of people that were more familiar to us and and that and, no, and being able to find Shiv and for that to be uh, a new face to us and then feeling that that would be you know that you'd be a new face to audiences was uh I don't know I, I think that that brought real energy to that moment of choice as well. I mean, I mean I'm I'm so feeling that um where you know because we didn't know Roshan beforehand that we all, well, I was, and I think you guys as well were saying that, you know, how great her reads were early on, you know, that finding little bits, finding the moment where a little, the comedic beats, that there was a very just strong, intuitive, immediate kind of sense that, she, you know, here was somebody who was going to be able to bring a lot of what was needed straight off, you know, and, um, and that I could sit back a little bit then and take it easy, you know, not have to... Uh, work so hard. So thanks, Roshi. <laughs>
Roisin, I hope you're enjoying basking in this. <laughs> I am basking and I'm just thinking if you can um, pop me over a wee recording, I can put it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, not next. <laughs> yes. Listen not, to it every morning. Not like this. It's not like this on set. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fantastic that you found the right person to lead the show, but it's, it's absolutely an ensemble piece. And in series two, we get to see more and more of the extended Sheridan family. You've got Kieran Hines from Pomboid, and you've added Michael McElhath and Sam Keeley and some other new faces to the show. Um, can you tell us a bit about the new characters uh, that we're going to meet? Nancy or do you want to? Yeah, um, well, we, um, I suppose the main new character we're meeting is Bernie's boyfriend, Finbar, who has been moved into the house between series one and series two. And he's sort of, um, the Sheridan house has a, an outhouse where Aunt has the younger brother has been living and now Tom, the dad, is living there. So they're sort of an, a classic Irish separated situation that feels kind of separated but not separated. So the dad's living in the shed and Finbar's living in the house and he's played by Michael McElhatton brilliantly. And he's just got that sort of, he's just very comfortable in someone else's house, let's put it that way. <laughs> and um, and I think there's a great dynamic between him and Kieran Hines as to, it's almost like Tom is unaware of how much he has been removed and sidelined and sort of dislocated from his own life. And that's a big story in season two is this idea of, of, I suppose, being late in life and trying to figure out who you are when all of your children are growing up, your marriage is over and your career is kind of out ending. Like, what, what is the next stage for him? It's a big, big storyline. And I think um, Kieran Hines, I, I hadn't seen anything like that in a show like this. And I think he brings um, such pathos to it and then such rage when, when it turns. But um, Finbar is definitely the catalyst and then we've got the amazing Sam Keeley, who plays um, Alex, who is the kind of reason that the challenge to ship sobriety in a way, it seems, because he's really, he likes her and he really rates her and he kind of invites her back into the world of relationships again, which in series one was the thing that sort of knocked her right off the wagon. And it is something that in recovery, you know, dating, it's really hard to do when you're sober. And you don't maybe necessarily want to give everybody your entire life story, but actually you can't drink. And so it's um, it's about that relationship is surprising to us because actually he's not going to challenge her sobriety. He's really challenging whether she's ready for a relationship. Is she Has she really given up the old patterns? So, um, yeah. I mean, interesting to pick up on what you said about Tom's character and the, the sort of tagline for the show, the title of the show is about Shiv's sobriety and about addiction, but series two definitely kind of expands to look at identity crises in lots of different ways for these characters. There's lots of self-sabotage going on that isn't necessarily down to addiction. Can you tell us a bit about kind of evolving the themes of the show for series two? Me? Yeah, it was always the, the whole aim of the show was never to just be a show about addiction it was about how somebody lives within their family and Shiv was our uh, the person that we anchor to um because we want you you know because she's fragile and vulnerable and trying to start anew it was a great way into a family but it was always going to be every single person had their own story that may or may not have been connected to addiction and in a funny way Shiv in season two is maybe one of the healthiest people in that house for a very long time um and Bernie is is somebody who's carrying quite a lot of that story this season and so we all I always I always see Shiv as the catalyst when I'm when I'm arcing when I'm setting out the show she's always the person I'm anchoring to what is her journey and what is the question for her through the series and then through that I look at the other themes start to emerge from that, like from there, what happened needs to be happening for Tom, what needs to be happening for Bernie. And I always want to be inviting those big questions that we'd all be maybe asking ourselves at different points in our lives so that there's always something for an audience to say, oh, I get that. I remember when that happened. Um, I think those things are important. Um, I also think there's quite a lot in this series about whether you're at the place in your life that you want to be at at a certain time you know like Caroline is definitely facing 
she's really assessing you know she has a timeline and she's not quite on it she really wants to be progressing in her job and progressing in her relationship and progressing in her kind of plan to be a mother at some point uh and she has such expectations of herself that she needs to try to meet and doesn't quite know how to and then Ant is being faced with you know can he move into the next level with his relationship can he be a mature you know can, can he ha find that maturity and, and it's like it's like life's putting these kind of challenges to everybody in the show and it it's sort of it's quite it's very subtly done but uh, you know I think everyone can understand can relate to whatever stage you are at in your own life sort of looking at life and going is this where I thought I would be yeah, there's a kind of sense, uh, it, that sense of questioning and dissatisfaction, maybe, you know, like the it starts or the end of the last season had that moment of hope. And then uh, that's totally starts to get challenged and questioned from the beginning of uh, episode, uh, the first episode in season two. And there's that sort of that ripple is across uh, uh, the whole family, really, isn't it? You know, Tom, can I live in this? this way you know um and and am i i don't know am i good enough i suppose the question of identity and it comes with him and and shiv i suppose it's you know if my mother did this thing at the end of episode one why am not i feeling it now where wh what what's happening you know um so the so i think there's a lot of burning stuff that comes from the end of of the bomb that went off at the end of of episode one, I think still reverberates through it. Um, Paddy, earlier you alluded to the the fact that you've got to balance the really dark places that this show goes to with the comedy. Um, it's such a funny show. How does finding that balance affect the process? I know that it's kind of there every every day, every minute for you when you're shooting. Can you talk us through a little bit? Um, getting yeah, that right. I, I, I think. I think. I mean, it's one of the things that you know you're. Um, obviously, you know, the tone of the show and representing the tone of the show and the possibilities of that, you know, is, is a big concern always. And and how those various elements can sit in the same space and you can move between them was is something that I'm always, you know, totally worried about and, um, you know, questioning all the time. How, how will I do that thing or how, how will I make that work um, in the way that it sh should do? And uh, I suppose it's it's sort of quite interesting. We were talking the other day about, you know, there's a moment, for example, when uh, Tom, Kieran Hines' character, has, you know, there's a very sort of big moment for him in the show. And he gives, when we shot it, I think I got him to do three takes. And one of the takes, you were there, Roshi, and you, you remember it. One of the takes was absolutely brilliant. It, like, would... For the acting was phenomenal and the crew you could see around them were all so impressed and taken with it where where Tom sort of falls apart really emotionally but I remember looking and saying it's can we survive that you know even though how brilliant it was can it sit in the world where we have to go back quite quickly uh to a comedic scene um and that that can absorb that energy that that Kieran is given. If it's too profound, uh, will we survive? You know, and so we ended up not using that take, uh, mm -hmm. even though it was brilliant. And I suppose it's all. And then you begin to regret it afterwards as well. <laughs> and should I have used it? Could I? Maybe I should have worked it and found a way. But it it is such an interesting process when you are going from those dark places to light. You know, and I suppose the the joy is in doing it is that, you know, finding, and the reason you maybe go to the dark places is to find the light, you know, um, uh, and that contrast between the two. And it's such a great uh, aspect of the, the, the show and the scripts and the characters. But that, you were so there. conscious of it. Like it was the first conversation that we ever had was, cause he was like, Nancy, you've got like- one where, The one where I pissed you off. <laughs> <laughs> Not the one where you- <laughs> But it was like the ongoing, it was an ongoing conversation through through series one because it was like there's, you know, there's suicide, there's, you know, there's really dark stuff. And then there'd be like a, you know, a really comedic 
scene. And then it got to the point where, where I remember there's a scene in um, series one where Aunt and, uh, the, and Carol Hines' character have a huge big moment of a cathartic, devastating emotional moment. And Patty's like, I think we need a moment of physical comedy just before because otherwise <laughs> they'll be like, where what's happened? So we had to kind of go back. And then the same with Roisin's huge moment at the end of season one where she's like, it was an incredible piece of acting. But then you fell off the the table in a kind of a slightly it was all it's always like how how far can we take it before we have to move back to comedy and Patty's brilliant at kind of calibrating that and coming back to me and going have we calibrated that enough are we too funny are we too sad how far can we go with this and, right. and also think, uh, across the series as a whole if you go you know I think that the other part of that maybe the Kieran scene you were talking about is you could go so dark in that episode and go back to comedy, but there's also going to be another dark bit further along, and which is the darkest. And you know, there's a, and uh, there's that sort of sense of build and continuity. And so there's the kind of double structure of the episode and the yeah, because if somebody's having a crisis, one character is at their crisis point, the other character can't be ca others can't be carrying that crisis point at the same time. Mm. So I'm always going, okay, who's having their big emotional moment in what episode? And then what needs to be happening for the others that take us out of that? Well, what, what what's great is like there's always a great conversation around all, all that stuff. So you, you sort of refine it and you can change your mind. You know, you might come in with a worry or a strong opinion, but you can change that in a good conversation yeah. or you can change somebody else's mind in a good conversation. And for me, for me coming on set, it's fantastic because the worst nightmare is, you know, an actor asks you a question that you don't have a clue how to answer. You know what I mean? That it's, you know, they have a legitimate concern and they want to say, why am I doing this? Or why am I saying that? So the pro that process where we all get to talk a lot, I think, I hope so, uh, Roshan, I don't know, maybe you have a different <laughs> view, but I, when I get to the, the set, that it feels like it's a it's a coherent sort of sense of where we're going. It, it, it We all... You know, there's no, I don't think there's too many doubts. There might be things about where you want to explore or change or try something out, but there's a bit, there's a clarity around the whole thing, I think, from script um, uh, uh, when we get to set. Yeah, there absolutely is. Um, from from my point of view, anyway, there's there's been it's been spoken of the the rigor with which you know everyone in the 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 team have already have already done a serious amount of work thought through every punctuation mark, thought through the balance and the, the highs and the lows. And so not only does that make it much, much easier, but when there is sort of options and choices to take and how where to push things and where to pull back, um, being able to know when you're in such safe hands and just being able to kind of even sometimes just do this. We don't, you know, it doesn't need it on set certainly, and we've talked about time, time constraints and things you don't have you know, as much as you'd love to sit down with a cup of tea and, and discuss the, the background of, of that page, um, it's not possible. So it's about getting down to a shorthand. And for me, Patty has always had an incredible way of of just helping me understand or unlock something further in what's happening in one sentence. I wish I could remember some of them because I did say at one point um, a really big choice that Shiv has to make. And I was going... Like, whoa, I don't know. I don't know about this. And um, yeah, and in, in one sentence kind of created a space in which without being black and white, with still with still being able to play some complexity, I I understood as as the actor, you know. So um so that's magic and that that is downed, I think, is is the the rigor, the search for honesty the whole way along. I think as well when the characters are really well formed, they're all, you know, they all have the potential to move us and to go to darker places, but they all have the potential to make us laugh and uh, and maybe can sometimes confound our, our expectations of them as well. Um, so I think you're working from a very strong starting point, you know, um, and that makes things simpler. Whereas if it's, you know, you should be able to direct or or work in a sentence or in a word. 
because as soon as you start having to speak too much, you're kind of, I think you're in trouble, I suppose, aren't you? You know, if you've, you know, if you have to explain or dig into something too much, you, you know, it, ne it needs to be a small thing. And sometimes that might be, you know, Roshan, is there a funnier version of that? Something that isn't like a startling revelation, but it needs just that shift in a way, you know, can there's some a little bit more lightness in that. Uh, can we find that or or let let's ground this moment in in something that's a bit more serious and it's as simple as that sometimes that you know that yeah, you're not, it can't you're not be just words it. edge edgy darkness <laughs> the light yeah. the the ground and the emotions Better. sometimes it's about what we see Better. here Better. not what we see here you know it can be you know um it it, it, it can we've sort of probably developed that um that shorthand um, and that vocab and and that's uh, it's just a it's just a brilliant way to work because I agree with you, Patty. Like I, I think for the level of concentration and focus, I suppose to get through what we get through in a day, typically, um, you kind of want to be keeping that as streamlined as possible for everyone, you know. So um, yes, as I guess on the day, it's about it's about keeping it ticking over and, and reserving energy and for when you really need it and all that sort of stuff as well has to be taken into consideration. Um, it's really interesting to hear you talk about economy of words in terms of directing because I something I do think is brilliant about the show while the script in terms of the dialogue is brilliant there is so much that is in facial expressions um, in this show in the way that the characters react to something especially with those siblings um, where you know it's just a raised eyebrow and you know that that's how a little brother would react or a sister would look at her sister when she says something she's not expecting. Rasheen, can you tell us a little bit about your your on-screen siblings and working with them? Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, they're absolutely brilliant. Like just offset and onset. Um, it feels very much sometimes, you know, like we are siblings, like we are a family and, and they kind of we can take the piss out of each other. Um. It's just they're the the you know Adam and 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 Siobhan are just are great great all round people and 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 to be on set I think we can challenge each other and push each other a little bit as well um you know and just when you're saying about facial expressions and and you know there's one in particular in 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 series two that I was. Um, speaking to Siobhan about where she makes a face during a just one just a face during one moment and I had to rewind and watch it a couple of times it was so funny that I mean, episode five. just huh Is it one or five 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 yeah no, that face. <laughs> <laughs> many pages was that scene 10 yeah 10 page scene car like m lots of people in the scene and it was just for me like just that that's what the scene was just this one look um and <laughs> and you know and and character adam is the same they're 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 so talented and 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 just it makes it you know it makes it so much easier and um n you know not taking n none of us i hope take things too seriously so there's always just a bit of room for looking after each other as well which is really nice um I absolutely think it's those little moments that make it such a believable family dynamic um it does feel like you're there in the house with them although there are a lot of people in the house in this series so it's already quite crowded um Emma and Nancy it was as I think somebody's already mentioned it was a long road to to make this show um what were the challenges along the way and what made you stick with it when you were hearing no's yeah, so Nancy came to Element um, with this idea, uh, and it was really quite clear from the beginning uh, as a as a concept about this family, about Shiv, and about her alcoholism and the family's way of coping with that that problem. And we got some sort of initial traction with RTE, uh, the Irish broadcaster, and that you know that part of it was very simple. So we got Nancy writing. I think she wrote two scripts at that point. But of uh, you know the way the nature of television, we needed to find co you know partners to work together, and going into the UK market to find those partners. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, sort of funding available in Ireland, so we you know we pieced together lots of the pieces, but we needed this UK component. And 
I think I was very conscious that we probably just needed to find one person who really got it. But we were I was we were taking the project out around the time where suddenly we were faced with quite a lot of conversations around the oh well I have a kind of messy thirty something show already actually. Uh, there were also quite a few of oh we've got an Irish show already actually and um and you you know you're like oh this is you know maybe it's just not the same Irish show <laughs> or you know maybe you can have two Irish shows or you know as Nancy made this point the other day like you know, there's been many messed up uh cop shows over the years and no one said I've had too many um but there, there were a lot of knockbacks but I think the the scripts were just really funny uh, and I've worked on a lot of very serious things and I was just, <laughs> I didn't want to lose the funny one. <laughs> I wanted to get to make the funny one. Uh, but I also just thought it was a, a, sort of had a fundamental universality to it that uh, that people, that an audience would enjoy. So there was a little moment and it's one of those kind of serendipitous moments where um, some of the kind of element team had been into BritBox and BritBox at that point had kind of amassed a lot of, um, sort of quite male centric content and they had put a sort of call out saying we'd love something about a woman <laughs> something female centric and I was like white well I've got one of those uh I mean now it seems like so so passe the idea of like oh can we have something about a woman <laughs> but that was still you know it was still a, a country it was still a thing at the time um so we took it into uh, uh the commissioner there was Kaylee Jealous at the time she just fell in love with Shiv she herself was a sister so she loved um Shiv and Carolina's characters and that was that then was the beginning of getting to make it uh it, it, you know it's the kind of story it's the age-old story you really just need to put the script in the hand of the right person and then your fortunes can turn around the story itself never changed the script's really the plan that Nancy had from the beginning is, is really close to what ended up on screen for the first series um and then we were lucky that those partners were able to kind of you know support a second series as well so it was all kind of formed in that in that moment I was going to ask Nancy how close this is the show to your original vision that I think was eight years in the in the making yeah six between six um was really close to it it was really close to it and I was very lucky because um because of this creative team and because of this incredible cast I feel like the show is really carefully minded, you know, because to be to be honest with you, I don't I I started in theatre. And so for me, the script is really important. It's kind of sacrosanct. And so I was terrified that I might come along with a director who's like, ah, you don't need that or, you know, blah. And I was like, this is too important to me because having waited for six years and having thought and lived with these characters, you know not to not have and also I think when you start from a rigorous place where the script is rigorous you can't then become less rigorous the show because you'd notice it in the tone of the show would feel less sharp it would feel strange and so it really felt important to me that we found that team and Paddy is is like the dream director because he's so rigorous and he analyzes everything and we talk through and then to have Roisin, who's just the most instinctive actor, like they all are, but like there's not a line that the, the way they feed in, the way they understand and then bring, as you say, those looks, those gestures, those it, it feels so alive. And I mean, it's it's very close to what I wanted and obviously much better than what I could have ever envisioned. Um, but it, it it is that thing of you don't know as a writer who your collaborative partners are going to be. And they're so important. And um, as you said, your background is as a playwright what was it about this story that made you think it was right for television rather than for some kind of stage production because of, of what you've identified which is that it was an ensemble and I was like how rich would it be to really get in under people's skins like in, in fact you can't even do it in one season like definitely in my mind I had three you know in my head that that you could go um, because I felt like I really wanted to tell a story beyond just trying to get sober, but actually how does she become herself? And also who, how do the parents become herself? How do we face into the, into, into the later parts of our life? How do we navigate our twenties? You know, all those, um, things. And I felt like television actually was the perfect medium to really go 
in and allow us to take little detours and odd absurdities like the strange story about the neighbor who's murdered his wife you know those things that happen to you that you kind of can't explain or don't understand and I thought this was the this was the perfect way so it, it's not something that could be done in two hours on a stage and um, Paddy I know as everyone has said very rigorous um can, can you fill me in a little bit on how you built out the world of the Sheridan family from the scripts you know I know the music's hugely important obviously it's all shot in Dublin can you tell me a bit about how you pulled all of that together to to get the show that we we're seeing now well I suppose like you know from a sort of camera style and 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 that side of it it's sort of because the show is is, is very full I don't think it it's not a show that needs a, a sort of stylist's approach in that in that sense that sits heavily on top of the, the thing. It's a style that needs, I think, to be able to react to performance and, in, and, and allow performance to come to be. So it's kind of a very naturalistic way of shooting. But yet within that, that you try and find um, beauty within that naturalism as well. So that because there's a lot of beauty and beautiful moments uh, in in the script and emotional emotionally beautiful moments. So you want to be able to find ways that they connect with the pictures as well. So so it was a simple enough style. I think um, some other elements that just below the bonnet, you know, like sound wise, keeping it sort of very lively and also a bit rough as well at times, and that it has a sort of um, you know, at times it's it's a, it's a bit abrasive, so it never settles down or sits down too much. And I, and also maybe there's a relationship, again through naturalism to sort of a little bit soundwise documentary sound, a touch. You know, not very, not totally, but that it's still it's a cousin of that, let's say, as opposed to something that's very clean and uh, sanitized. It, it has to feel that it's very lively and busy, like our family are. Um, and then, I mean, a big choice was the house, the house, a space that that fitted who they were class wise and there's where they were socially. And um, but yet and was big enough that you can frame them and film that ensemble, let's say, but at the same time, not so big that it doesn't didn't feel um, incongruous for who they were socially, you know. Um, and also this that house, like as soon as I saw it, it I knew it, it has shape in it that lets you um, place a sort of interesting aesthetic in a very natural way. You know, it just it just had some uh, a character about it. So we were kind of blessed that we found that. Um, and the, the music was a big concern as well, you know, in terms of um, of making uh, I suppose it was a sort of idea, you know, of a lot of repetition of themes and familiarity around that, um, that that I wanted to to get, and also that also connected in some way. And I can't. It's funny. I feel bad now because I forget. And I did do a lot of thinking about this, and it was and it was really good thinking. Like there was that, that, <laughs> the conversation with Sarah. <laughs> Like if I would listen to those conversations now, I would be fascinated. But I've forgotten what they are at this stage because it's eighteen months ago or something, and uh, and it's done and dusted. But the result is there to see. That's the lovely feel about it, um, and sometimes you kind of wonder. Sometimes is the substance of your conversation any use at all, or is it just the conviction that goes with it that actually makes the thing happen? And then when it happens, uh, it doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you think. That's very deep, uh, Paddy. I mean, why were you? <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm just going, why can't I remember the things that you know you've achieved or you've done or whatever? Sorry, any. Um, but no, but there was a lot of conversation around it, particularly the source music was a big thing as well, because I sort of I I I, I think uh, the the supervisor, Juliet, the music supervisor, sent a, a playlist. And I listened to it and uh, there was a couple of artists in it who sang uh, and wrote their songs with a certain wryness and there was a sort of dryness and humour in those songs and a certain objectivity in their narrative in the songs that I felt chimed 
with our world. And then I began to think the idea, was there a way of using, rather than loads and loads of singers, um, you know, because if there's blanket licenses, there's a sort of an element that you've gone into a sweet shop and you can choose what you want or something, you know, sometimes there's a sort of, uh, that, that habit can develop. So we reduced it down and it became almost like what I felt there was a chance for it to become like a narrator uh, in the way that Simon and Garfunkel do in The Graduate, you know, that, and that when those voices and the, t not just the voices, but the sort of wryness returns, it's a sort of another level where you're, you're representing the story and the script and the feel of the thing is coming again in a different way. And the repetition of that in a different uh, compartment, let's say, somehow enriches the other parts of it. Um, so that was the thinking behind it. And, it, and, and it, I think it worked in the first one. I was very happy with it anyway. And in the second one, we've kind of, you know, followed along a, a similar um, similar route. So that was very verbose. It certainly does have like a real character, that music. I was humming this morning and I realised it was one of the little refrains from... <laughs> oh, and I emailed our music supervisor begging her to get me tracks. <laughs> you know, she's like, that's not out yet. And I'm like, <laughs> well, can I get, I get it? <laughs> she's yeah. like, no. well, it really like... feels so woven in uh, to, well, the, three, to the three, show. Like Surika Richardson um, and Neve Regan, who did most of the source music, you know, and and then um, Sarah Lynch, who's the composer, and they just all, uh, you know, they I felt they brought a huge amount to us, you know. Um, Nancy, um, I know that we've talked about the ways in which the show expands beyond alcoholism and addiction, but that that is the sort of the spark of all of this, and that it's something that you've got some experience with in real life with your family. Can you tell us a little bit about how your experiences fed into the show and what you wanted it to say about addiction and about alcoholism in particular? Yeah, I mean, I'm always nervous just to say, because there's a thing that happens to women writers where everything has to be autobiographical and or else you couldn't possibly have made anything up yourself. But I wouldn't have, so I'm kind of going, and I'm not an, a psycho, I'm not an addiction counselor, you know, I am a writer. And what I've written is just from some experience, um, which is simply that I, I, I'm from a family where there's a lot of recovering alcoholics. And I grew up with people who, who gave up drink, but actually I grew up around a lot of people in recovery and then had a number of relationships with people in active addiction in, in later life. And I what I learned very quickly was that actually alcoholism and addiction is all around us. It's not, it doesn't come in the shape that we necessarily see. Like in Ireland, there was a one of the reviewers said, well, she doesn't look like an alcoholic. And that was, I mean, it got all of us enraged because we were like, that's the, the point of the show is we don't know what an alcoholic looks like. And, um, you, you know, a, a high functioning alcoholic of which I was very close to many can really hide that. And um, so it, it felt to me, because it affect, it felt to me like this was a rich territory because it's such a complex subject and there's no one right way of getting sober there's no one way an addict is there are certain commonalities but actually it's it's deeply and there's no one way of being affected by being the child of an alcoholic or the partner of an alcoholic everybody's different i felt like this would be a per, a really interesting way to look at a family and to look at dynamics and to explore all of those because and the youngest brother you could go he's not really affected he's not an alcoholic and yet he is affected he hasn't had a lot of attention there's a lot of stuff that the family have kept hidden from him that sort of kept him in a childlike state and Shiv while she carries our, our, our you know the central idea is actually a really sensitive person who I feel has used alcohol to kind of block out the things that she can't feel. I think that's something that Roshin's performance, like Roshin came in and just had that. But that's something you don't know. We, we've seen a lot of addicts being wild and crazy and well, she's that. But actually, a huge amount of addiction comes from people who feel too much and need something to buffer them between the world. And so I just felt like there was an opportunity to look at all of this and we could take our time through television and maybe not even in the first, I mean, the second series actually explores it in a very different way, but uh, it just felt to me, so that, that because my life had had a lot of um, 
contrary a no one way of getting sober doing it I felt like this would be a really interesting um way to look at it and I hoped that it would speak to people uh, in the audience who both felt yeah I can see my journey there or family members who might understand each other but also um people who are in families who go I know what it's like to never ever ever get a look in because somebody else is taking up all the attention I mean that's so interesting the idea that she doesn't look like an addict because that's something that she sort of has to face up to in the first series as well as well her idea of what an addict looks like the two AA meetings she goes to um, <laughs> Rasheen what kind of response did you have to the first series did people want to to talk to you about their own experiences having watched the show yeah I, there actually has been um a number of of people who've approached um personally or or you know via the various mediums of communication that we have these days just um you know very in a very positive way a lot of people who identified particularly with Shiv I you know people who who just said that's just me and I've never seen it um certainly not on TV I, I haven't seen it and and it's a sort of very affirming thing I think to um to be able to to, to uh, draw on you know well it's for me it's why we tell stories you know you draw on your own identification and sometimes there's healing in that sometimes it's painful sometimes it can be a bit brutally raw sometimes it, it you can laugh because you see recognize your own you know I certainly recognize some of my own ego in Shiv when Shiv when she's trying to kind of be sister Shiv and 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 save everybody else and um but you know one of the most beautiful things was um, I, I was sent a message um you know and, and I passed it rightly so on to Nancy because again I think I think this is you know it's the bravery of of putting this down in paper and putting it out there is um somebody had just said that for the first time ever they were able to communicate with their family as a family they sat down and watched the dry and this person had been in recovery for a number of years and um and and that it 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 was very impactful in a really positive way and and you sort of think well if 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 you can be a small part of that in any way it's well worth it um we are almost out of time but that feels like a really good place to end because i think it speaks to how how powerful tv can be um thank you so much to our panel for their time today to nancy emma rasheen and paddy um the Dry Series 2 is all on ITVX from Thursday the 14th of March. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you so much.